Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Time now to go into Lifestyle Daily. But a quick reminder that you can just follow us on all of our social media handles. We'll be updating you on a lot of things, sites and scenes, the atmosphere, the AFCON, the update on our social media handles. Derek is there working tirelessly to bring us information over there. JKD as well. We'll bring you everything that you may not have to miss right here. If not on the AM Club, you definitely will find it on our socials. Now let's talk about some stories that made waves last week. Let's focus on um, the what Godwin likes to say, the elephant in the room. Now, this morning, I'm joined by Kwachi E.J. Sabetema, West Youth MP, and my favorite and my very good friend, Benjamin Kwame Amankwa, Secretary, NDC, Captain North Communications Bureau. Gentlemen, Happy New Year. It's good to see you. It'll be my first time, or maybe... It'll be my first time talking. No, Not yet. No, no. Oh, right. Forgive me. But this gentleman is quite a, a popular face on the AM club. Benjamin, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. How's the year starting for you? Well, um, with the MPP's government <laughs> abysmal performance, the year has started so slowly. In fact, it is akin to death itself to be a <laughs> citizen of Ghana. Now. But how for do? We can only pray to God that uh, we continue and the blessings of God uh, continue to dwell on Ghanaians as to how they manage on their daily basis to survive <laughs> another matter altogether. Interesting. I would have thought you talk about the match. Did you watch the match yesterday? Well, I'm not really a football fan. I don't watch at all. But mm. uh, I am not surprised. You see, when the head is spoiled, you don't expect the middle to be good. The person leading the country is, uh, is uh, the, the, a group of people leading the country are problematic. So you don't expect every any any aspect of the country to work. So the fact that they've defeated the Black Stars is no surprising because the the failure stems from the head and it is going to move through to the middle to the tail. So everything in the country is in, is uh, uh, is it's a disaster. So it's not surprising to me. We can actually link the government to the abysmal performance of the Black Stars in the ongoing Afcon actually. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, Mr. Sabe, did you watch the match yesterday? Yes, I did. You did? Yeah. Okay, tell me. Um, what were your sensations before, during, and after? Okay, so I think um, when, I, when I was watching the match, I made some comments, I made some observations that um, you see, for the past um, four matches you have played against KV, they have never scored us, you have never played, um, you have never drawn the match. So, going in the game, I was expecting a win from Ghana that we are actually going all out to win this game. But... To my expectation, it ended up we really losing the game, and I was very sad. I was very down. Like it actually spoiled my evening, and I wasn't <laughs> even able to sleep well. Oh, I wasn't even able to get up and do uh, my things I have to do in them because I was really down. Your fellow countryman here says that he thinks that is an extended <laughs> result of bad management. Of yeah, the so I mean, how that to be possible? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure he's a true Ghanaian, though, because being a Ghanaian, you have to support your own. So we are all Ghanaians and we are all supporting Black Stars. You, can, you can't come and tell me you think from the head to the tail, for, because the head is not actually functioning very well, it will actually affect the middle or the tail part. I don't actually side my mind with him because we are all Ghanaians and we have to all move out. It doesn't out. matter. It doesn't matter. It, it, it matters. It matters because as a Ghanaian, you have to hold the um, um, flag very high to... That's self-esteem. So, like, I, I, I'm not sure he's a true Ghanaian because if you're a true Ghanaian, I'm sure you support blasters who had, who hated me. Yeah, finally, we know, we know you're not a citizen. Uh, yeah. We know I, you're not patriotic. Remember, you know, a leader <laughs> is a strategist who is able to identify other competent people that will work with him mm. in every facet of his managerial work, okay? Mm. The appointment of the people to manage the appointment and the election of the various executives all boil down to the head. And it doesn't surprise you the results. Exactly. Anyway. If your, your, your manager of MX24 may not be uh, part of the day-to-day -day operations of this station, mm. but by and large, if anything feels, it boils down to him. Yeah, that exactly. is actually the analogy I'm drawing. Okay. And so President Akufuado is to squarely to be blamed for the poor performance of the black, black stars mm -hmm. in the AFCON. Anyway, let's, let's go with one of the big stories last <laughs> week. Um, you may have seen, I mean, let's go, let's take even a lot of steps back where we saw some billboards mounted and says the new force. There were rumors and then there were, you know, talks about the fact that it would be Nanakami Bidiako or what you also know as Cheddar. And finally, he confirmed it during the convention that really never happened, but he had a presser. Mm. 
tell me what you think about the introduction of that new force billboards, the, how, how they entered into the political scene. If we're permitted to say that they've even entered a political scene because he says that he's not a political party, he is a movement. I, I've come to you, Benjamin, how the entry of it, the entrance of it. Let's do a bit of analysis, the man behind the mask. See, when the first time I saw the mask, the voodoo mask, mm. uh, with the uh, writing, um, the new force, the mm. third force. Mm. Being a marketer, I told myself, this guy is a strategist. I don't know who it was. But I knew that whoever was behind that mask was one, a business-minded person. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the person was a strategist. Now, political strategy is a mystery. Now, everything that will evoke a sort of excitement in people will make people question who is behind will bring a lot of people together because they don't understand the mystery. Now, one of the reasons why many people are deceived daily in religion, for example, is that the mystery around the Holy Spirit is something that has not been uncovered. And because this guy has tried to create himself like a mystery, and that is the strategy he used to enter the political space in Ghana, it became something that every single person, you go to Twitter, everybody was talking about him. Mm. That, that was even before we got to know that it was... Uh, Caesar was behind it. So I say that. Now, I listened to him again. Then I saw the mission, the vim and verve with which this guy spoke. And when he expressed himself, the ideology, the fact that he said that uh, the political administration of Ghana has been centralized in, Accra, in Accra, and there was a need for decentralization, I realized that the guy has an idea. Indeed, MFA, the appearance of this guy on the stage is something that excites young people because the narrative, the political narrative of Ghana has been monophonic. That is between MDC and MPP. They have been singing the same song. Mm -hmm. And the young people who are looking for a new, a new song, a new hope, mm -hmm. try to identify with Caesar. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I'm not surprised that mm -hmm. the MPP government tried to thwart the guy's effort by bringing a group of Pan-Africanists together. But I'll go into the details of that, and I'll give you the historical basis. Mm -hmm. The fact that the MPP is anti-African in the first place, and when Nkrumah's two face and wanted to actually fight for the independence of the Gold Coast. The MPP was a political party that stood against that. And so the, the, the fact that uh, President Akufuado and his cohort wrote and uh, later thwarted the effort of these people is historical. And he's just following the footsteps of his ancestors or forefathers. And so we shouldn't be surprised. That would be my initial comment. But I'll go into the detail and give you the history as I'm saying. Interesting. Interesting. Mr. Sabe, so did you... I mean, for you, you, you align yourself with the NPP, do you yeah, not? Yeah. Okay. And so when the introduction, the introduction and how they entered the political scene, do you see it as any threat to the, 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 the ruling government at all? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, for me, I don't think it's a problem to the ruling government because um, when he was starting, he, he said he actually filed uh, an application for a political party, but he later comes... Up. I think the guy is a kind of bit confused because he comes up like it's a movement, not a political party. Later, mm -hmm. he comes to join, um, I think it was one of his interviews at yeah. Joy News. He said he has filed an application to um, 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 create a new political party. And I think when, with one of his interviews, he said he's not interested in positions. He doesn't want to run for um, uh, office. Yes, any office. So. I get a little bit confused about um, um, Nana um, Kwame Bidiakum mm. because it's like he doesn't know what he wants. He will come and say this thing and later come and say a different I thing altogether. So I, for me, I don't think it's a trend to the ruling government at all because he's kind of confused. I'm running, I'm, I'm running for um, a presidential um, something. Later come and say I'm not contesting again. I'm not any political party. I'm just a movement trying to... Um, um, gather the voice of the youth to... I mean, let's just say that, yes, he's indeed confused. Are you saying that in this confusion it will not affect the political parties anyway? Assuming he <laughs> says that I'm just a movement, I do not want to be a political party. Are we saying that it does not in any way or indirectly affect any of the political parties at for, all? For me, I, I don't think it affects okay. any of the political parties. Okay. Because for the ruling government, you are not actually feared or you are not actually shaken by what he is doing because... To, to be a third force in Ghana, it takes a lot. Like, like it what? takes a lot. Like what? Um, I would say it takes don't, a lot. Don't forget that you have one 
that has come out already. That is uh, Alan yeah, Kujo Chairman Alan Singh. Kujo Chairman Singh. And that has a direct bearing on the NPP. Yeah. We don't know the numbers yet, but we know that a chunk of people have, you know, have said that they are aligned to that movement. And we would have thought that would be the third force. Is this really the third force or is actually the fourth? Okay, so they are the new force. They're mm -hmm. not aligning themselves to whether they're the third Which or the force, fourth, but they're a new force. Whichever force it is, they're a new force. And we're saying that it doesn't have any barrier. I would have thought both parties, NDC and MPP, will be worried. Uh, MFA, we, if, we are, we are not really if I may come in. Okay. You see, NDC is not worried, but MPP is jittery. And there is a reason. You, you rightly put it. Alan, Alan Chedamantin is a colossus in MPP. He has recently broken away. And mm. uh, if you follow well the Afrofranto movement, you realize the gains they are making, especially in the stronghold of the MPP. Mm. And so Alan has already posed a threat to the success of the MPP in the 2024 election. Mm. That notwithstanding, <laughs> with Freedom Julius Caesar coming and trying to also mobilize a force, it's another threat to government. Mm -hmm. You know, they are the ruling government. They always want to stay in power. But I'll give you two instances and the reason, the actual reason, why the, uh, the Blaster Square was taken away from the, 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 co the convention people. Now, the guests that were invited, P.O. Mumba, Obi, and uh, Arikana. Yeah, that's Arikana. When they came to the country, the pre-convention interview they held with TV3, one of the things that P.O. Mumba said was that, the Lidium agreement that the government of Ghana signed was bad. That was a pre-interview that they granted. Now, when they also came, Freedom Julius Caesar led these three people to former President Mohammed's um, residence okay. to greet him. Now, look at the picture. Why? Why not the, no, why not the ruling? Why, why not the president of well, Ghana? Well, that I cannot answer. I don't know the strategy. What do you think? You, uh, uh, Let's get into their head. Well, for me, uh, former president Mahama is a statesman. Mm. He's a statesman, and he has been a former president. Perhaps Freedom Julius Caesar, even though he try, he's trying to form a new political party, thinks that President Mahama might have done better than the current government. For that matter, he identified in a way with his policies, even though he's coming with a new policy. Okay. That is a, a, a gesture. He, I'm not into into Bediaku's mind. I'm mm. just guessing. But that's what I think. Because MFI, if I like you, the fact that you are my opponent, I may share certain ideas with you. Right. I may come and greet you and say that I brought these people to help <sighs> in the governance of this country. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to join forces with you anyway. So the government became more G3, identifying that or realizing that freedom has actually gone to Mahama residence and has not even acknowledged the ruling government. You know, in our politics, when it comes to second round, usually the smaller political parties always join or find way to join either the MPP or the NDC. Mm. So if at initial stages this guy has actually gone to Mahama, it also tells you clearly that if he should reach there where we may go to a second round, he might maybe perhaps identify or collaborate with the NDC. Do you get it? Okay. And so it is, it, 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 it is just understandable for the MPP government to be jittery and to act in a childish manner in which they acted because the reason that they gave for which the place was taken. Now, let's talk about national security. Now, let me tell you, if our national security is anything to write home about, I don't think it's anything to write home about because if you have a man in but a mask... you are enjoying freedom sitting here. You're not under any security This threat. freedom that I'm you're enjoying. You're not under any... You're not... You, are you afraid? When you move from home to this place, are you, were you, did you feel any security threat? I mean, if I, you know me personally, even if there are guns blazing, I don't really fear. And I've always insisted that the way I speak, you know the number of threats and the messages I get on social media? I have always told them, for me, death to me is the beginning of life itself because we all die. So I've always said that Despite the fact that there is freedom in Ghana we are joining, which is not as a result of the MPP government. MPP government has always led, has always created violence and disturbance in this country. There are historical evidence that I'll give you if you want to go on that trajectory. Mm -hmm. But let me say that the foundation of the democracy that we are enjoying today was laid by former President Rollins. And, and, and it was from there that all the democracy, so if we are to give credit for the peace and the freedom we are enjoying, MPP is far away from the case. I've always told you that the MPP 
NDP from the beginning of independence was against Nkrumah, and it was the NPP that wrote to the colonial government that they do not want Nkrumah to attain independence and that they would thwart the effort of Nkrumah. This is historical. You can just Google. You come across this. So I'm saying that when it comes to the peace and the freedom you are talking, NPP is far away from it. But let me come to the main, uh, the main issue. The issue is that the NPP is afraid. Look at the political terrain. Every single Ghanaian, even members of the new patriotic party, are complaining. They know very well that they are going to lose the but election. But why would the NPP be afraid of a guy who is not I'm, certain I'm, of what he I'm, wants? I'm, I'm, I'm even you see, can, that, can, you, can you tell me what exactly <coughs> you think he wants? Because he, he really Freedom. Is, yeah, what, is, what MFA, does he want? Let me tell you how politics works. You know that in politics, timing is very important. Okay. This is a guy who branded himself <coughs> around a voodoo mask. I've told you, that is a mystery. And when you create mystery, People will love to gravitate towards the mystery to understand the mystery. I've told you why these uh, fake and false prophets are able to have following for years without people realizing it. The mystery I, of it. The yeah. mystery of it. Because nobody can actually show you spirituality and show you that this is God. You understand? So they try to hide on innuendos and ways. And people are always eager to understand what the mystery is about. Benjamin, do you think he can become president of Ghana? Julius, mm. what well, that Jacob, one? Jacob Caesar. Ja Jacob, see, let me tell you, frankly, sincerely, when he speaks, I identify with him. Mm. You know, the MPP actually, I've never really listened to the guy, mm -hmm. but until they canceled the convention, mm -hmm. then I started following him. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that no, the guy, the guy's ideas are re revolutionary. In fact, I see more of myself in him. Mm. Okay, as to whether he can be, become president, as to whether Ghanaians. Uh, who give who endorse him with his tigers and leather wears and the branding and thing that is another conversation altogether. That one will see his smoothness level after the December 2024 elections. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know why you want to thwart the effort of this, especially looking at the, the guests that were invited. Let's go to Mr. So why why can, are you able to let us in as to, into why you think that they didn't allow that convention to that gathering to happen? So per what we know. Mm -hmm. that the early hours of that day, they were alerted not to continue with the gathering. And the reasons they gave that they had an equally important event, event happening on that day. Mm -hmm. And we followed <coughs> Kindy, no events happened that day. Mm -hmm. Unless of course it happened and we don't, we don't know, if you can confirm. We didn't see any, any events happening on that day. Uh, a, a lot of a lot of a lot of community also, you know, circulated. He just that he said he paid a thirty thousand Ghana cities for the space, mm -hmm. and it's been refunded at ten thousand Ghana cities. He's also said he's been on record to say that he has been in communications with the uh, other 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 presidency, the person who is in charge of foreign and diaspora, you know. Communications about that, he's been there. So it doesn't look like he just got up and then was going to do that event. Mm -hmm. Let us get into why and how the reasons the presidency gave or the ministry, the information ministry gave, suggesting that these three people that were on the, on, on the bill to speak will pose a threat, a national security threat to this country. Are you able to let us in? <laughs> um, for now, I, I, I don't want to say anything about um, what you just said because I have no idea. I have no re um, idea why they actually cancel the program. They gave, these are the reasons they gave. One, you, you don't have to have an idea, I can tell you. One. I, I, I know the reasons they gave for the cancellation of the program, but I'm trying to say that from my perspective, from where I'm sitting right now, I don't know why they gave that idea, so why they brought up that thing to cancel the program. You don't have to. You don't have to get into their head because they've already said it. So let's analyze how how like potent those reasons are, okay. and and how and how fair it is to the the people that were from different places that showed up that day because it was advertised, Kinney, and people were ready yeah. to listen to these three people. If these three people were delivering a speech anywhere else and it wasn't on this particular platform, people will still go and want to listen. And yeah. people have said that it is an embarrassment to us as a country, especially the three people. I mean, Pierre Lumumba, it's not, the first, it's not the first time he's been to Ghana. Yeah. He actually describes this place as a second home. He's always here. And he has never had to pose a threat to this country than to be on the platform. Was it the platform or the people? Okay, what do you the, think? I think? You it can was, speak it as a person. Platform. The platform. Yeah, it was the platform. The platform that won. 
that's... that we want people that are change makers. We want people that are youth-led and empowering of youth people to come and address the people, the young people. How is that a threat? <laughs> Peter Obi is right here from Nigeria. And yeah. he's been associated keenly with the, people, the, young, the, youth, the youth, the young people. How is that a threat? So, as I said earlier on, as I sit here right now, I, I don't see that thing to be... You don't a, think it's a frivolous yes, thing? I don't think, I don't see it to be you, a thing like not But do you not think that it's frivolous? Do you not think that it's just... It's just okay, you, I would say it's unfair. Yes, I would say it's unfair. Because if these three people are coming to Ghana to just have a program or, like, be on a platform to preach or to talk to the youth and you would sit in your comfort zone and say you're yeah, yeah, actually um, putting a hold or putting a stop to the program or whatever they are coming to do. I think, to me, it's unfair. I, I would sincere with myself. It's, it's really unfair. And okay. I don't back the government for doing or for cancelling or for putting a hold or a stop on the program. Mm -hmm. Because it's like these are um, African, um, um, how would I put it? I mean, it? these are change makers. Yes. And, and but are, if you say you yeah. think it's unfair, why don't you blame the government for it? But Who created the unfairness? I'm saying I'm saying I'm blaming the government for it because what they did was actually unfair. Because you have these three African opportunities coming to Ghana to have a conversation or to have um, a conference with the people of Ghana, and it wasn't per what um, Nana Bidia Kwame said. Um, the New African Foundation or the community program was just a program to voice out uh, the challenges of Africans. Mm -hmm. And also to listen to the youth and also help them to solve some problems. Or so, so I think. Let's to just me, say it was. Let's just say that as social security, you can pick up information that the public will not pick up. And one of the things that we may pick up is the fact that it will be the platform where he wanted to unveil himself. Let's just say. Exactly. MFA. Let's just say. That's the point. If that is the point, how is that a national security threat? It is not a national security threat. That's a fact. That is why the are we reason. Setting? Yeah, we are very certain. Now, an individual, I was going if, to. If, if you're going to use a national platform, mm -hmm. the Black Star Square, whether or not you pay for it, mm -hmm. if you're going to use it to announce such a personal and a personal feat, you don't think that it is more like you sway. So if you come to me to ask for a venue, if it comes to me to yeah. ask for a venue, that you want this venue for this and this and that, and I later pick out that what you pay the venue for is oh. not what you stated for, you're misleading me. And that for me, if, if, I'm, if I'm the head of national security, what do you think? Uh, MFA, you see, earlier on, mm. as national security, even before Freedom applied for the venue, national security a good standing one in any country should be should able to be know who is behind this mask. Mm. Even from the beginning, mm. it will be incompetence, mm. and I'm not surprised. Mm. If national security should, security should tell us that, proud to freedom applying for the Blaster Square for the convention, mm. they do not know that it is Freedom Jacob Caesar who is behind the mask. You want to tell me that people go around in your capital, mounting billboard with voodoo masks? And national security is sitting down and doesn't know who is behind the mask. So the fact is that national security knows that it is freedom who is behind the mask. That is one. Hopefully. We are hopeful that they know. Okay. We are hopeful that mm -hmm. they did their good job and they know. Okay. Do you have something to say? Yes. L let's yeah, assume, I, I I'm, I'm, I, let, let me just okay. finish up. Now, when freedom applied or whoever applied for the Blaster Square, of course, they don't, you don't just apply for a public space, they, don't, they give it to you. You have to state the reasons. Mm -hmm. If possible, they will invite you and question you on what you have to use it for, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, this is a venue, a public space, and you should know that Article 21 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana gave us freedom of speech. The fact that it's a freedom of assembly. The president himself on the Constitution Day says that he guarantees the freedom of speech of people and the assembly of people. Five hours after that, after that speech, he went to cancel an event where law-abiding citizens of Ghana want to assembly and listen to sensible voices that will help in the emancipation of mm. African continent and Ghana for that matter. Mr. Saba, what did you say? Okay, so to what he was saying, yeah, to what you were saying, you were saying um, um, the government, we, you were saying it was 
if you come for a space from me and tell me mm -hmm. what, tell me that this is what you're using the space okay. for. Okay, so from from his interview I read, he, he said he he didn't want to disclose himself. Um, uh, on the that day. Yes, on that day. Yes. But he was actually taking time to just use some time to get to um, reveal himself that he's the man behind the mask. Mm. So, per what you are saying, I think with the national security, he actually did some um, investigation to get to know who he was. He wanted to reveal himself, but he came out to state that he didn't want to. But I mean, but how do you punish a crime that's not been committed yet? <laughs> Oh, but <laughs> sometimes you can. You can like you telling can, me that okay, you have sometimes, the mystery, okay, so everyone knows Nana, <laughs> Nana Kwame Bidiakon is the founder for New um, New, is New it, Africa. New Africa, yeah. is it New Africa Foundation? Yes. Yes, and and we know that he's um, the founder, so he actually applied to use the Blaster Square. Mm. Okay, so since um, we, he's it's known that he's the founder for the New Africa Foundation, it is kind of. How do I even put it? Kind of uh, put it any which way you like. <laughs> kind of known that he would actually do something. So we preempted his actions. Yes. And Sometimes and you can you can foresee some, some some crimes MFR. to be committed. Yes. Sometimes you, you see, okay. you know that before you determine a crime, there must be the actus reals yeah. and the mens rea. But at least he's got them. They are able to determine the. How mens do you determine the mens rea without, without the actus reals? <laughs> you can't you can't you, can, you can actually charge anybody for committing a crime by just saying Based that as intent, I'm here, then I said, I've detected you that you were going to kill me. MFR was going to, <laughs> you are going to kill me. So that is why I cut your truth. So anyway, guys, so I think I think I've spent a lot of time on, uh, on, on him. I, my time is nearly up. I want us to talk quick, quickly okay. about Ekredi Japan and his comments. Okay. Would have gone into the, uh, the agreement that we wanted KPMG to look at, but that's a whole, we have to go back to what the fourth estate actually found out and all of that, so we'll take time and do that. But let me take your comments briefly on Canadian Japan, on Francis Asenso Boachi. I have consistently maintained that Canadian Japan is a blot on the political administration of Ghana, and being a member of parliament has even made it worse. And I'm not surprised, he's out there, he seems to be above the law. Thank God he went to U.S. to see mm -hmm. people where he has seen his smoothness level, like the way he behaves in Ghana and things that he can just have his way around. When he went to U.S., he tried it, and he saw his smoothness level. Mm -hmm. But let me face the real issue. The issue is that he has alleged that um, some person who has served as a deputy chief of staff mm -hmm. is engaged in corrupt activities, and if they vote for him... Uh, He's going to let the cat out. See, in a serious country, a, a, a person of the caliber and the status of Kennedy and Japan, who is a member of parliament, should have been invited. Because what you are saying is actually a crime. If you say that somebody has collected 20,000 US dollars to allow people to see the president, that is a serious and a damning allegation, not only against the individual, even against the presidency itself. I mean, but an individual came up to do an allegation, and, and the, the government or OSP or nobody, I don't know yet, but I don't have any information that they invited this person, the said person that accused Francis Asenso Boache, that at the time that he was at the office of the president, asked that he pays $20,000 before. We've not seen that, so why would you want to single out? You see, Canadian MFA, what I'm saying is that if me, I stand here and made an allegation, I'm nobody, you can, for, you can forget about it. Mm. Kennedy, Japan is a statesman. Mm. He's somebody who is a member of parliament. So his words carry weight. That's the point I'm making. Mm. If Canada, Japan points accusing figure, <coughs> finger at anyone, it should be a point of concern for us. Is there a point of concern for you guys? Yes, it is. Why? Because um, he being, as he said, a statesman, he being a member of parliament, and sometimes what he said actually carries weight. And um, he, has, he has been in parliament for like a quiet number of times. So... Whatever he says has has weight, so it's a it's a concern that they're actually painting um, as Enso Boache's face black that he is that he is that he has done this. So for me, it's a concern to the New Patriotic Party and the ruling mm. government because he's trying to. What can you do about it? There's nothing you can do about it. Are you it. sure? <laughs> but I I find it very interesting that um, Canadian Honourable Canadian Japan creates the impression that he is against corruption.
if you listen to when he wanted to get the mm -hmm. nod to be the flag bearer, exactly. the posture he had was, I don't like people who steal, I don't like people who, okay. you know, he's against bribery and corruption. But that is actually so, a false a false yeah, representation. So I, I find it very difficult to know that you have such information and you're sitting on it, and it makes me feel that then you are... It is not as... even, MFI, it's not even about the information alone. You know, you remember the uh, elections, the, uh, the presidential primaries, yes. where it was alleged that they were paying money. Mm -hmm. You know, he actually agreed that he also paid money, and actually it was that what Baumia paid was more than his. You yeah. are somebody who said you are against corruption and monetization. You are for the ordinary people. This I think welfare. that... They describe it as yes, welfare. Yes, but paying money to delegate to vote is not something that is corrupt or something. Someone so, you see, oh, this oh, MPP oh, wait, wait, narrative, oh, wait, wait, wait. you see... So, let, let, let me try and say something. Um, for, uh, for instance, during the delegate election, they were voting at one center, okay? So maybe if I stay far away, I'm just... You just come and vote, pick a car, because no matter where you stay, you pick a car to come in to the voting center to vote. So the money given was just to save us transport. And it's not like we are the only person who's, who actually commits that um, act. I am, our NDC um, party, you also do that. Don't you also do that? See. Si. Because this money is to save us um, um, welfare, to save us transport, to save us food, at least to cater for the delegates who actually leave their comfortable zones or their home to come and vote on that day. So we agree that when a person comes from their home to vote for you, they're doing you a favor. No, that is the point. That is what I'm saying. You see, that's what I'm saying. You see, that's what I'm saying. You see, that's what Let me tell you. Yes, you see, it's, it's this conversation, vote, I'm very passionate about it because this is where the whole but thing... But the NDC does the same. No, I'm saying yes, whether it is NDC or MPP is wrong. I'm not talking about political parties here. But I'm talking about the main issue. See, to go and vote, it says responsibility on every citizen. <laughs> in actual fact, no one is supposed to give That's you transportation. That's our national election. That for is the, it. For the internal party elections. Ex I don't know whether it's a responsibility Ex for no, you guys. No, even that one. Even that one. It's not? No. Yeah. You must be silly, sir. See, uh, MFA, <laughs> even that one, it is the responsibility of a good citizen or a patriotic citizen to go identify a right person who can lead a country or a community and also decide to vote for that person. This responsibility does not require in return any form of transportation, feeding, or anything. That is why it is patriotic. You see, this narrative that the MPP is bringing... Who usually conducts the elections? EC, isn't it? Yes, it's EC. You, yes, it's EC. So why election. are we not taking the voting centers closer to them if we really want to take away the, the, you know, the logistics, which is the reasons why we've been giving. That is why they pay the, money. The question we should even be asking is, do you know the reason why the EC is having uh, these streets... Um, branches mm, and all yeah, to yeah. make the election as more accessible, decentralized. More decentralized. But, but as as a political party, I I the ACA to supervise. Don't you think you should be invited to the disciplinary committee? <laughs> okay, so let's talk, let me say what I have to say right now. Mm. As a political party, I I have the right to decide whatever how I, I want to go about my election. The Within EC, the confines the, of the laws of this country, yes, but you can't be outside of the But, but no, the, no, no, the no. EC the EC's duty is to supervise my election, not to kind of um, um, but the rights of citizens are still the same across we, yes, the board we get it does but, not but still we i decide to um, um, have my election at one center the ec can't decide for me to actually um, spread it across various constituencies it's up to me as a political party if i have the necessary funds to cross, um, to spread my my delegate election around mm. other constituencies, and but that you that you don't want. Yes, you rather pay for the welfare. I'm, I'm not saying you rather pay for the welfare, but it's something that comes down to, the, to the political party. You, you are making and it's too for them to decide. assumptions because the EC has guidelines. Before the EC supervises any election in Ghana, mm -hmm. there are guidelines. If you don't fall within the guidelines of the EC, they will actually not come. So don't make it as if that the political parties can do whatever they I'm, want. I'm not saying they can uh -huh. do whatever they anyway, want. So, so if you want to address a specific issue, let's focus on that and let's address it. Okay, gentlemen, thank you so much. I am thinking mm -hmm. that the MPP has created a monster. That's Kennedy, Japan. And the monster is about to swallow them. Oh, yeah, it will devour them, of course. But anyway... What, things that we see, we also see in the NDC. Today is not, you are not on duty, that's why. <laughs> but gentlemen, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. See you again another time, okay? Okay. All right, guys, that's just about it. We've got a very interesting plug. And again, I want to remind you that we're going to be bringing you everything that you're missing at the AFCON. We are in Cote d'Ivoire with you. We're there with you. And we bring you side scenes, food, culture, music, fans, reactions, and everything right here on the AM Club and even on MSN4 Television and even more on all of our socials. So please be on the lookout. Time now for the vlog. <laughs>